Sound check one, two. Sound check one, two, one, two. What a beautiful share! These kits are lovely! Welcome in, welcome in. So we're doing a thing. So we're doing a new thing. So between myself and Tattooed Viking, um, we decided that we're going to do a co-manager save where one of us will play a few games, save the file and then send it across to the other person and vice versa. And then we'll carry on. So Tattooed Viking had first dibs last night. Um, and I'm going to do a power hour session now between four and five. Um, so as you can see on the screen, we're Ajax. So basically what we did is we put, we collected about 10, 12 teams each, put them onto a spinny wheel, uh, and then eliminated them one by one, and we ended up with Ajax. So realistically, we're probably going to win the league more often than not. Uh, the long-term plan is that we want to compete in Europe, and that is the very next game. We'll start the Champions League campaign next up. So, just having a quick look back and a recap of the, the uh, matches that we've played so far. So, Viking won 4-2 um, in the, against Fortuna Sittard in the league. Um, then he won 7-0 against Groningen. 2-2 uh, draw with Sparta Rotterdam and a 1-1 draw with... No, sorry, it was me that took the 1-1 draw with Utrecht. Good afternoon, Viking. Welcome in. Um, so, my first match... Um, actually played Vikings formation and personnel and drew 1-1 one, one. Uh, and then I changed it a little bit to um, suit what I know and um, we we got the 7-1 victory from there why is my camera not on? why is my camera not on? Just bear with me one moment. So we've had a pretty decent start to the season. Um, although we have, as I say, dropped a couple of points, which is uh, not ideal. Um, but the first match next up is going to be... Um, the first Champions League group stage game against Sevilla. That's not having to get right. Back in two minutes.
Lloyd shirt. What a beautiful shirt! These kits are lovely! Right, there we go. Camera sorted. Why the hell is it right up there? What on earth is going on? Um, Lucky Smith 13, welcome in. I guess that's um, I guess that's you, Kieran. Welcome in, mate. Welcome in. Um, so I'm just doing a quick power hour here. So just to reiterate, uh, we are Ajax. Um, Tattooed Viking played the first three competitive games of the season. He then sent over the save file to me. Um, I drew 1-1 with Utrecht and then beat Camber 7-1. Uh, Champions League Group B, probably the most comfortable group we could wish for, to be honest. Sevilla, uh, Monaco and Rangers. Uh, we're going to be starting the save next against Sevilla. Uh, in terms of signings that we've brought in, uh, we have been busy. We've been very busy. We've been busy. We've also been very busy in the... Um, staff market as well i think i've managed to close off all the gaps now um, but in terms of what we've brought in this summer andreas schleidel up from norgeland 7 million uh, raising up to 8.25 dominic livakovic the goalkeeper he's going to be the first choice keeper for at least five seasons i would imagine and uh, deandre nabeljo who we bought from mossyjek and we've launched straight, him straight back to them and Joel Agicom, who's a youngster that we've brought in, and he's out on loan as well. So we haven't made much change to the starting eleven, to be honest. Just Livakovic, um that we've brought in initially as a starting player. So home game against Sevilla. Probably play a couple, two or three games in this save. Um, we we'll get the Herenveen game in, and mm, probably do the Monaco Champions League game, and then save the file. And then uh, Viking can pick it up again later on tonight. But yeah, welcoming guys. Some great signings. Yeah, well, yeah. I wanted to bring in Gabbiadini on the um, deadline transfer window. Um, that didn't materialise. We went back and forth. We, um, we agreed on a price and we agreed on financial terms. Um, but then it <laughs> went about £250,000 over what I had left. Yeah, I'll take Monaco. Yeah, fair enough. <coughs> so I'm playing slightly different formation um, to what Vikings playing. So uh, I'm going with, um, obviously, Livakovic in goal. I'm playing a back three of Blin, Timber and Alvarez uh, with Grilich just in front of them. Then a deep line playmaker in the, the middle of the park in kind of Taylor uh, and Klassen next to him. And kind of technically a front four with Brobby as the... Um, the main man up top leading the way. Kudus is a shadow striker. Bergvine on the left and the Campos on the right. So the first game I played with this formation and this personnel, we won 7-1. So there was no issues on the goal front there. So let's get into it. So we are literally right on match day. And we've got the sound alerts ready to rock and roll. Um, but this is where, realistically, we want to compete. We want to be competing in Europe. Home advantage is going to be so important for us here. The first goal is crucial, right? Um, not necessarily. Uh, both teams carry some good recent form into this match. How confident are you? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. We're uh, really looking forward to it. We'll look to build on the impressive performance against Combo. Of course we will. There we go, there we go, we've got the Champions League theme. A strong front four here, um, with three defensively minded midfielders protecting that back line as well. Sevilla with ultimately what will probably be a flat back seven, if they're anything like when they played at the Etihad a few weeks ago. Went over to that game against Man City. It was a nothing game, that, and City still absolutely ripped them to pieces. I think Sevilla had already qualified as well, to be honest, at that stage. The champions! Here we go, we're underway, so we're going to have a positive mindset. Timber with the free kick early on, just on the halfway line. <coughs> Into Taylor, who turns and Kudus is in on goal. Great save. Great chance early on, but a fantastic save um, by the Sevilla keeper. We need to be tucking chances like that away, don't we, early on, early doors. 
especially at home. You've got to win your games at home. I think Sevilla will probably be the, the main challengers for us in this group. Bergvine. A campus on the right side. His shot is deflected and taken by Bono. I assume that's the Morocco keeper, isn't it? Bono. Not the uh, not the former singer. Um, but it's all been one-way traffic so far. However, Mohamed Kudus is now injured. Potential foot injury in the 26th minute. Um... Which for us a little spanner in the works, doesn't it? Because Dusan Tadic is not quite ready to come back, so we're going to have to put Bergus in there. So we've got Bergus and Berg fine now. Hmm. So the early chances were created for Kudus, but um, but he's gone. 25, 26 minutes in, which is um, a worry. We'll have to keep an eye on that one after this game. Anyway, we go again. We rebuild. Well, we don't, because we've lost possession. We've given it away. And we've given it away again. Twice in quick succession. Sevilla, no doubt, will be looking to um, smash and grab here. And Sousa with the effort from the edge of the box. And look at As Tadic just come back there, and I'll be interested to see what he can do. He's not quite back yet. Um, he is on the orange injury, but I didn't bother risking him. Like in the last game, when I was 7-1 up... As, you know, as we went through the game and it got to four and it got to five, I thought, shall I bring him on for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes? And I thought, it's just not worth the risk at all because if he gets a long-term injury, then um, then it's going to be difficult to uh, to cover that. So I just thought, we'll leave him out for the time being until he's 100% fit and then we'll phase him back in. I mean, he might be okay to come on for the last 20 against Herenveen, maybe feature for 15 against Monaco. Uh, and then by the time you take over the save later on tonight, Viking, you probably get more more time out of him than than what we've had all season so far. So we're forty five minutes in against Sevilla, who we know is going to be one of the main competitors within this particular group. Uh, we're ten shots to their three. We're four shots to their one on target. As you've seen from the highlights, <coughs> it's pretty much been one way traffic, but. We haven't had a killer, killer instinct to uh, convert these chances into goals, and I don't really think that we have. Realistically, even now the transfer window's gone, I don't think we have a plan B for the bench because I don't think Brian Bob Brobby has been involved in any of those highlights at all. I don't recall seeing Brobby involved in any uh, incidents there at all. So they're bringing on even Rakitic now. So if they get a free kick or a corner uh, up in the final third, then uh, they're going to be creating chances. They're going to be creating chances. Grilic into Livakovic. Short to blend. Out wide to the right hand side for Ocampos, who cuts inside and finds Kenneth Taylor. He brings the ball over the halfway line. Has he got any options to the left? He has, but he hasn't played any in. And he's then given the ball away in the middle of the park as well. Kenneth. Navas on the right. Cross blocked by Timber. And then a couple of small triangles. But um, again, Brobe. Not really been involved in this match at all. Off the line practically there. Brobe has now come deep to, to pick it up. And we've played... An hour of this football match. Um, and Sevilla coming into it now. Growing in confidence. And beginning to... Um, to cause a threat. 15 minutes to go. Just under now. go I'm gonna this is why we get paid the big money to make the big decisions Robbie's coming off he's done absolutely nothing in 78 minutes of this football match 
So Luca is on for the uh, the final stint. Are we going to create anything in the final moments? Three minutes stoppage time. Nil nil. Okay, so we know that Sevilla is going to be one of the main threats, as mentioned. Um, but you've got to win your own games, haven't you? You've got to win your own games. How will Mohamed Kudus injury affect the squads? It'll totally fucking blows up, mate. He's a top class player, and any team would miss him. That was the only question from that game. Monaco beat Rangers in the other tie 2 1. Morales equalising with 18 minutes to go. Okay, so back to league action. Three to four weeks for Mohamed Kudus. <coughs> Three to four weeks. Mm. Louis van Gaal spotted at the Johan Cruyff Arena. Casting eye over Julian Timber, Daley Blind, Brian Brobby, Kenneth Taylor, Davy Klassen, Stephen Bevin, Karim Rakik for his next Holland squad. Obviously, in this game, we're in September of 2022 and the World Cup being in Qatar. So we will lose a lot of players and I assume that the season will probably come to a halt, will it? Um, October, yeah, so 13th of November is the last game before the World Cup for us, and then we re merge on the 8th of January. We'll send the assistant to the press conference, we'll just get it on. We're powering through, we've just got an hour, 40 minutes left of this um, particular service stream, so we'll get through this Her and Veen game, and then we'll play away to Monaco. And we'll bring the stream to a close at that stage. Aaron Veen going well, sitting in fifth, six points from the first five games. Brought Dennis Berg campaign as assistant manager. Got quite a few questions here. Um, we sit alongside new arrivals. Is it an exciting date? It's, yeah, it's very proud to be working with him. Good Liverkovic proved to be a match winner for Ajax. So that's why we brought him in. Dominic can lead the club to glory. He can indeed. At times, a moment of brilliance can win a game. How pivotal do you expect Schleidel up to be in those types of matches? Again, that's why we brought him in as well. We anticipate the squad reaction signing. Everyone at the club's is very excited and very happy. He can indeed. Livakovic can indeed become one of the uh, the future stars. Um, I didn't even have Schleidel up on the bench then. Which is an oversight on my part because he would have been the natural option to come on for Brobe. Even though he's naturally a left-sided player, finishing first touch, dribbling, passing technique. So I didn't even play Schleidel up. And not even didn't even have him in the squad because I was too stressed about Streamlabs not opening, and then the camera not working. That I totally forgot to play to include Schleidel up. In the squad. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <coughs> uh, but in terms of staffing, uh, we're nearly there now. We've got, we can bring in, perform, uh, two, we can bring in two performance analysts. Now that I can say the word. Um, one, two, two more scouts. And three recruitment analysts, if we wish. Um... And we can bring in another two physios on top of the two that we've got and a sports scientist. But I'll do that bit. I'll do that stuff off stream. Do the boring bits off stream. In fact, there is another scout on his way in. So I had a look at some of these this morning. 
Um, so we have uh, Viking. We have a scout that specialises in Argentina, and we have a scout that specialises in Brazil. Uh, one in Italy, and I think one in Spain. I don't know, darling. Um, so once we get sorted and we need to start looking for people again, we can get them designated. Do we have any more iconic staff members? Um, we not necessarily iconic. But, um, some recognisable names. Overview. Where does it show, where does it show me the name? Surely there's a better view than this, just going through these. Park Ji Sung, as a coach. Uh, Wes Houlihan. Stilian Petrov. Dida is the one you brought in. Shea Given, as well as coming as a goalkeeping coach alongside Dida. Um, um, and we've got Puyol as a scout. I think that was the Spanish one that I mentioned. Who else have we got? Let's have a look. I don't think there's any more other than that. From a recognisable name aspect. No, there isn't. Come on. Later. Okay, so we progress on to her and Veen. Um, and I think I'll probably definitely include um, Schleidel up in the squad this time round. Possibly even. Starting, we didn't. He could pro. He could, well, I guess he could sit in the Kudus role, couldn't he? <coughs> Schleidel up as a shadow striker in the absence of Kudus. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Let's uh, let's get that set up now. So he doesn't naturally select him as an option to go there, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it and see how it see how it pans out. Under eighteen sports scientists coming in as well. So yeah, the gaps are the gaps are closing, the gaps are filling up. Little ones looking forward to going back to school again. Um, no, probably not. Um, I didn't wake him up this morning. Um, so Ollie got out of bed about ten. He's six year old. Had his breakfast about 12, where's he get? Um, Lucas didn't appear till about half 12, 1 o'clock, I don't think. So they're going to get a shock tomorrow because um, they'll need to be up and out the door at um, 7, half 7 tomorrow. I'll tell you one player that I thought you were going to sign a Viking, Adam Ida, or Adam Ida, however you pronounce it. I know his stats are not amazing, but um, he seems to crop up, doesn't he? And um, all walks of lives and all people's saves. Well, let's fire through some of these. What time are we on? Already half past. I believe in Stephen and his abilities. Mm. Not particularly a fan of Stephen Berghaus. Or Bergvine, for that matter. But... Um, they are here, they are recognised as big players and um, good players. So we'll just have to see how they get on. I did fancy him, but something doesn't sit right with me about him. Yeah, that's it. It's, it seems to be more of a glitch glitch player than all else, doesn't it? Uh, Talstar's Aggie come update. So this is the 17-year-old um, that we've signed for um, literally less than a million pounds. Now we've loaned him out uh, to Telstar in the league below us. He seemed to be struggling as a team. Um, his stats are half decent. He's now made five appearances, which is good for us. Because he's going to be uh, one of the long-term projects. But we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, we move on to match day now here at Her and Veen. Uh, we're at home there in six. We currently sit in third place. Um, 
we just need to keep winning league games basically because we should be there or thereabouts come the end of the season but like I say the main aim for us is European challenges I think the board set the expectation that we need to get to the knockout stages it would have been nice to get three points on the board against Sevilla but uh, that's not the case I don't like Berghaus but I'm a fan of Berg Vine on this mm. I think one of the things that uh, annoys me, Viking, is the fact that the names are too close. So <laughs> I'll probably at some stage get one mixed up with the other. Um, we're not going to go from positive to attacking. We're just going to keep it as is. So we've got Schleidel up in there. So he's going to make his debut as a second, as a shadow striker, rather. Um... I think it's just a case of needs must at the moment. Obviously, Kudus would have been in there if he'd have been fit. Uh, Dusan Tadic now expected to be out between seven days and two weeks. Yeah, so he's not going to... I'm not going to bring him on at all in this Herenveen game. And I'm probably not going to bring him on um, in the Monaco game. So... You will get first dibs on Dusan Tadic, Viking. You'll get first dibs on Dusan Tadic. Simple don't play one. Yeah, that's it. But then I forget which one I don't like. All right, hands in pockets. Are you reason for encouragement from this team since you signed? Yes, been largely good. Yeah, we're going to miss Kudus. Fixture list has admittedly been kind in this situation. It's still a challenge. It's definitely a challenge. How's the mood in the camp right now? They're a confident bunch. Absolutely, here we go. We're underway. Match day. So Schleidel up makes his debut for Ajax under the management of Rob Woolhouse and Tattooed Viking. <coughs> so you remember in the last game against Sevilla, we started well. In the first half, especially, we dominated. In terms of possession and chances, a Campos is in here and weak shot though. Goal from the edge of the box. Now I'm concerned he's got to play one and get a broken leg or something stupid like Pendant did in QRM. Oh, gutted. Corner comes in. Brobby with the header at the back post. Just wide. At 15 minutes on the clock, her and Vignette to offer anything in this match. Liverkovic with a short kick to Blind. Now Alvarez. It's back to the feet of Blind again into Grilich and Klassen. Klassen giving it away. That is a shocker. That was such a simple 10 yard pass. And Klassen's giving it away. Wow. Against If he does that against bigger and better opposition, then you're going to get punished. Cross comes in. I mean, Sars totally unmarked, seven, eight yards out, and puts her in V1 a lot. Throwing on the left, Halovic controlled it and turned. I'm guessing that's Daily Blind that is nowhere near him. So we've played we played the first 20 minutes. Her and Veen had nothing. They've now had six shots in 10 minutes, scored one. And seem to be dominating the game. As we approach half time, we've had no further highlights other than that headed corner. Schleidel up. Has he had a touch? Hmm. We've been terrible so far, lads. Been absolutely terrible. We're going to go attacking. I don't think I'm going to make any changes as such just yet. Might bring Schleidel up over to this side. And changes all slightly to the advanced playmaker. Um, I'm going to play over higher tempo. And we're not going to pass in space. We're going to pass defeat now. 
Okay, second 45 minutes underway. In the Era de Visa against Heron Veen, when we're 1 0 down. Here's the goal scorer, Saar. As they look to build on the lead that they have. Schleidlopes got the interception and the counter attack's underway, but great defending there by the fullback coming across. Two on one opportunity there as well. And this is uh, a key highlight, so there's still going to be something created at the end of this. Bergvine into Taylor. Now Schleidlop come a little bit deeper there. Now you see he's creating a space. Brobby's in. Can he get shot off? Tight angle, deflected, and into the keeper's hands. So Schleidlop, I moved him from the shadow striker to the advanced playmaker on the left slightly, and he seems to be, well, he's already been involved there in twice in that particular highlight. So that is a little bit more promising. Grillage to Ocampos on the right hand side and back into Taylor. Now it's gone over the top and it's Davy Klassen. And he's blasted it over the bar. One on one with the keeper. Klassen's just not doing it for me. He's just not doing it for me. And for the final 12, I'm going to bring him off. And I'm going to bring on Conceição. Corner on the left. <coughs> to be taken by Blind. And that's the end of the highlight. Five minutes to go. We're 1-0 down at home against Her and Veen. This stream is going absolute dreadful. We've got a free kick. 90th minute. Kenneth Taylor. Left foot. Curls it wide. And that's the full time whistle and we've lost at home. It's the first defeat of the season. And bearing in mind that Hernveen had nothing in the first 20, 25 minutes. They've had 17 shots against us at home. You're not good enough tonight, lads. That's the sort of match that we should be winning. I'm not fucking happy with them boys. I wonder if he's better in the left with whoever is on the left going central. Why Kudus is out? I was a huge fan of Klassen either. Yeah, so Klassen gave the ball away on a short, simple pass early on in the first half. He's, he's gone through on goal, broke the, 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 the defensive line. Just lack of composure, wasn't it, really? Lack of composure. Schleidlup made his debut, looked better in that second half, didn't I? So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same again there next time. Send assistant for this particular instance. We're just going to power through. We've only got 20 more minutes left of this particular stream. So, we're going to get the Monaco game done. And then we'll transfer the file over to Tattooed Viking and his first game. And tonight's stream will be against the league leaders, AZ Altman. Herenveen move up into second after that victory against us. Still early days. Still early days in the league, to be fair. So we just need to progress through the next couple of days. Hoping for a confident game against AZ. Ooh. What time are you planning on um, streaming tonight, Viking? <coughs> Plans for me after this. When I come off at five, sort tea out for the kids. And then I need to do nip out to Morrison's when the missus comes home. Probably stop it. And then sort tea for us after that. We're having a big, fat, juicy steak tonight. It's strange watching the team play a different formation and tactics with the same players. Yeah, well, that's it. When I came on, I mean, I know, obviously, I watched your stream last night, but I was playing my save. 
Um, at the same time, so I wasn't really paying much attention to be honest, but um, um, so when I came on and played the the first game. I weren't entirely sure who I wanted to play and where, to be honest. So even the assistant, Bergkamp, he was saying David Klassen's currently seen as a regular starter but would recommend changing his state to a squad player. Now, that would, I know that would upset him at this stage, but it's interesting for him to be saying that as well. Uh, Jay Gorter is the other keeper that we've um, got sent out on loan. Steak sounds lovely. How are you having it? Well, I'll be having it medium rare. The missus will be having it well done because she's a bit of a knob. And on that note, I will be back in one moment. <laughs> Sorry about that. So we've got one more game to play. Uh, big fan of Timber on the right hand side. Says Viking. Not against us changing his playing time. Maybe gradually phase him out. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I mean, we've got a big enough squad. I think we have 11 subs. And you can make five um, in the league games. I have noticed that you can make five subs, so there's plenty of opportunity to give other people game time, um, rotate and, and fresh legs and whatnot. Um, but yes, yeah, maybe one that I mean, if he's giving passes away like that in knockout games in Champions League, then we're going to be punished, are we? You know, if he's giving the ball away that easy against Real Madrid or Barcelona or Man City. It'd be interesting, um, actually, because obviously a lot of our squad is going to be the core of the Netherlands team in the World Cup in the game. So it'd be interesting, I mean, probably not to stream, but off stream to, to actually watch those games as the season progresses. Um, actually spectate those games and maybe that's something that we could do um, well we could do it on stream I guess Viking if you want we could literally act as if we're in the stands scouting um, all adds to the, the story itself doesn't it I guess and um, the journey that we're doing see how they play and information yeah that's it you know and if for example Three out of the back four are our players, and then the other, the fourth player as well with them. It makes sense to then try and bring that defender into us, doesn't it? And obviously, Cody Gakpo is going to be a big, big player for the Netherlands side in the game. But I don't think we would get hold of him from PSV. <coughs> so we're moving on to match day now. We're away against Monaco. Well. Go upstairs, go and play upstairs. <laughs> so this is the final match for this stream tonight. We're going to be off at 5-ish. Louis van Gaal might take a couple of young players as well. would imagine Virgil van Dijk, Timber, Vindal, 
all start. Maybe Botman at the back line. Yeah, more than likely. More than likely. So, I've moved Schleidel up across to the left already. Um, Kudus obviously still out injured. Tadic is now five to ten days away, so not realistically any point in me bringing him on. Berghaus is not fully fit either. See, the only option now, when in the last game, when Blind had a lot of the ball, he just usually went back to Timber or Livakovic. There was nothing this kind of area was there. Maybe Bergvine's too far up. And possibly the same on this side as well for Alvarez. Something to um, keep an eye on. Something to keep an eye on. But we go into the second Champions League match of the group stage. On the opening day, we drew 0-0 at home with Sevilla. We're now away to Monaco, managed by Philippe Glimon, um, Youssef Afana, uh, Ben Yedda, the two, uh, the two bigger names and the more commonly known names in this, uh, this particular lineup. And now we are at the Champions League music. Looks like a 4-4-2 for Monaco. <coughs> which I think probably helps us as opposed to them. Just haven't seen anything from Brobby yet in um, in these last two games. I mean, he was on fire in the 7-1 win um, off stream this morning. But in those first two games, I don't think he's been involved in a highlight. Um, which is of massive concern. Could they play as a uh, DW? We've seen a few people use it recently. Possibly, yeah. Or um, a wide fullback, wide CB. Um, but we're anyway, we're underway. Ten minutes in, um, we are in. Um, I think it's supposed to be a dark blue and red, isn't it? It looks a bit grey on this, uh, this particular screen. But uh, yeah, we're in the red shorts for this one. A Campos breaking into the box on the right, but there's no one in there at all. No one in the box there whatsoever. Um, and now Monaco building out from the back line here. To Mbolo on this right hand side. Back to Vanderson and then Bolo again. He's got the ball in the cross. I think Livakovic got a hand to that. And it was a great save from Golovin's effort. It was unmarked at the back post again. Similar to a goal that we conceded in the last match. Albeit from the opposite side. Schleidel up pressing Ben Yedda. Good tackle. Strong. Firm. Surely that's out. Oh, Schleidel up's diving in again. I thought he was going to give a penalty away there. Two strong, strong challenges from Schleidel up. We might need to um, keep him out of our box. We don't want him diving in like that many times. 20 minutes played. It's quite an open game so far. Monaco seem to be creating more than us. They are the home team. You would expect that in Champions League group stage. And it's in Wasim Ben Yedda. In close range. This is not going particularly well tonight. Mbolo with a header at the back post. Beating Bergvan in the air. And then between Blind and Timber, neither of them could deal with it. I'm not enjoying Blind in the back three. I must say that. Bergvan on the left now. For Ajax. Looking to take on his man. Cross comes in. It's cleared initially, but it's gone back to Bergvine. And a fancy little flick. Did that go in? Did that hit the crossbar? I thought that had gone in. I thought that had gone in. Did you see the cross? Can we go back? Can we go back to that last highlight? No? I'm guessing not because it's already finished. Previous highlight. 
Where's play? No. Previous highlight. All right, play. Fast forward. Fast forward 10 seconds. Next highlight. Why can't I press play? This one. Watch this little flick. Watch this little flick here. Watch this. Woo! Cheeky. I thought that had gone in. I thought that had gone in, but we know. We're still 1 0 down. I thought it was. I thought when in was beautiful. That's it. Yeah, Brobe. Now on the right hand side. Looking for Grillich. A Campos has gone down in the box. Pale referee! Hey! VAR are looking at this. Decision is penalty awarded. It's going to be a Campos from 12 yards, right foot. Straight down the middle, it's a goal. And Ajax are back in this game. It's taken us from 12 yards to achieve it, but we're in. Da -da 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 -da. Kenneth Taylor now in the middle of the park, bring it forward, finds Brobby, who's come deeper again. Schleid loops in on the box, in on one one, he's put a chance wide! Oh! Was Schleid loop one one with the keeper? Who came out very aggressively. And uh, Schleid loop managed to beat the keeper, but he also beat the woodwork as well, he just went wide. With the right hand post, Golovin now, for Monaco, we're still in the first half here. Alvarez. Goes back to Livakovic and into Blind. Yeah, Blind, every time he plays the ball, it's going infield. So he's got no options. Bergwijn and Schleidel up. He's in. Kenneth Taylor's had a shot from long range. I think that took a deflection. It looked more like an own goal to me. But it's 2-1. Schleidel up pulled it back to Taylor. And for me, that's hit the defender's foot and gone in. That's hit number five and gone in. It looked more like a cross um, than anything else. But somehow, we go in the break here. 2-1 up. Uh, ben Yedda up and the scoring for Monaco in the 21st. Acampos then, just six minutes later. And Kenneth Taylor somehow... Um, Put the Dutch boys in the lead at the halfway stage. So obviously we'll take that. Um, I'm liking the number of incidents now and the number of highlights where Schleidelup is involved. Um, just over to this left hand side, ever so slightly. Um, he's had 45 minutes from the last match and now an hour of this match. And it seems to be bringing us a bit more joy. Ben Yedder's in, though. Straight Livakovic. <coughs> um, we are going to go a little bit more balanced. We're going to start time wasting a little bit. We're going to slow the tempo down a lot and reduce... Um, the directness of the passing as well. And we'll go another five minutes. Oh, we've now got an injury in the middle of the park. Grillich, the DM, injured. Um, right, I'm going to bring on Bassett. We'll move Blind to left back. And um, we're going to sacrifice. One of the wide players here as well. A Campos is coming off from Magellano, who's going to go at the back. Bergvine's going to drop into there as well. In fact, what we will do is we'll move Bergvine over to the right, slide up onto the left, and we will. Hopefully, see the game out from this stage. There is 15 minutes to go. This is the last match of the stream tonight. 
Uh, I'm going to save this stream and I'm going to upload this up onto YouTube as well. Uh, so Blind, there you see, now in the left back position, he's got an outlet which was slidle up there straight away down the line as opposed to going inside or back. So that's something I need to look at. If I'm going to play three at the back, I need to drop a, a winger in or a wing back in. Ben Yedder looked offside to me there. The flag is up. The linesman's got his flag up. We need to keep the ball here, boys. VAR are looking at it. Disallowed. It's been chalked off. It looks very good so far. Favourite players called Taylor. Yeah, Schleidel up. He's looked decent. I think Schleidel up. I've been happy. Now he's moved in that central position in the first game. Nothing of note, but um, since then, as we've moved him to the left, Brian Brobby's back there in the box defending. What the hell? Schleidel has got no outlets. Brobby should be up on the edge of the box, man. Can we get the ball clear? Three minutes to go. This is a key highlight. It's Monaco that are attacking and pressing. It's 2-2. Oh, the linesman's got his flag up again. Did Golovan stay offside? No, he didn't. Goal awarded. It's 2 2. We've thrown it away. Sa progressing into the box from the left hand side. Nowhere near offside, is it? Livakovic could have probably done better. We don't need to see another replay of that goal. Thank you very much. And the full time whistle goes. Okay, so we were disappointed a little bit that we drew at home against Sevilla in the Champions League, nil-nil. Um, you've got to win your home games. But for us to then be winning this one with only two minutes to go, feels like we've come away with uh, two points dropped as opposed to one point gained. However, we are still unbeaten. Um, in the Champions League, which keeps us in touch, I guess, um, with the other teams. We'll have a quick look at the group stage before we head off. So, Sevilla and... I've finished two time. Hello. So, we'll bring that stream to a close there. And now we'll send the file over to you, Viking, and we'll catch you very soon. Bye-bye.